So deep seek is such a term which I think everyone watching this video must already be aware about. So it's basically an AI just like ChatGPT and Gemini which we can use in our computers and smartphone to ask any kind of questions. But what if I say we can use that exact same deep seek AI using my ESP32 board of course with the help of its APIs and in this video I'll be guiding you all with everything from scratch starting with creating an account in deep seek platform, getting our own API key. Later, we'll test the API using the Postman applications and finally, we'll write our own Arduino sketch to ask any question to DeepSeek platform whose answer will be displayed onto the serial monitor. So there's a lot of new things to be learned in this single video. So let me just grab my ESP32 board until then you enjoy this informative ad. So this video is sponsored by LTM and we are all familiar with their secure collaborative design platform LTM365. But let me tell you one of its really interesting features. So with the integration of Silicon Expert, now you can visualize all the important parameters of the components all in one place. Let me show you a quick demo. In LTM365, just go to the manufacturing part search option. Here, you can search for any component you want to use. Just click on get data from Silicon Expert and it will pull all the crucial parameters of the components in one place. Below that, you'll also see a suggestions for alternative components along with the ratings on how well each one suits a direct replacement. Pretty interesting, right? And now if you're a student from India, well, LTM has launched LTM Student Lab where you can sign up with your university email ID to get access to LTM 365 online courses and can even get certification directly from LTM. And this will definitely help your resume to stand out and will give you a great boost in your design career. Well, I'll be linking away all the important links down to the description, so be sure to check them out. Okay, so coming back to our video. So now let's first create an account in DeepSig website and get our API key. For that, we'll first go to deepsig.com website and here we'll click on API platform. Now here we need to make an account and log into our account or else we can also log in with Google and if you are a bit uh, insecure about sharing your uh, account details to any random website, well, you can do the same thing that we did here. You can create another email ID, a new email ID and you can use that email ID for, you know, logging into these or other third party website where you feel little insecure about sharing your personal data. Okay, so with this, we are logged into our DeepSeek account and here we are not getting any free credits at all. Just like we are getting like $5 into uh, uh, what you can see the open AI's account but here we are not getting anything but here we need to recharge that account to use it for that you can go to top up and here you can do a recharge of as low as two us dollar uh, with taxes it's like 2.12 and here you can use paypal or debit or credit card so let me just um, uh, recharge two dollars with my debit card and with this it says you have paid successfully and I'm done with the payment. Now I can go to my API key section and here I can click on create new API key. I'll give this API key a name as demo and click on create API key. And with this we have successfully generated the API key that we will later use to call all the APIs for getting response based on our questions. And after generating the API key, now let's just test the DeepSeek APIs in the Postman application before moving on to the ESP32 board. So here inside the Postman application, we'll first of all select post here as we'll be doing a post request. And here I'll type this URL which says api.deepseek.com slash chat slash completions. After that, I'll go inside the headers and here I will add two headers. One is content type whose value is application forward slash JSON. Second is authorization in which I will type here as bearer space. Here I need to provide the API key that we got from the DeepSeek platform. So we are done with the headers. Now I'll go inside the body. Here I'll select raw. And here we need to type these many lines of JSON document which contains all the information like which model we are using. So we are using the DeepSeq dash chat model. Then what's the message? So the message is what is your name? This is the question that we're going to ask. You can change the question as well. So that was the basic API structure uh, to ask any question to DeepSeq. Now we are done with everything. So I'll just click on the send button and let's see if we are getting the response or not. So we got the 200 OK response and uh, the response has not yet been displayed. Time is going on and on. And it took 11 seconds to get the response 
which is actually too much so first let's uh, check the answer so here we got the answer inside the content which is i don't have a personal name but you can call me assistant how can i help you today so we definitely got the response but the time was really really very high 11 second generally we used to get response within like 500 millisecond or below one second of time maybe deep sick got so much popularity that it is uh, having a lot of active users right now because first of all it's very new and secondly it's very very popular like everyone is talking about deep sick right now so maybe that can be the reason other than that i don't know why it takes so much long time let's try to ask any other question do you know open ai let's just ask this question we click on the send button again it's taking a lot of time oh my god 19 seconds this time but we got the answer uh, which says yes i'm familiar with open ai open ai is an artificial intelligence research organization that aims to develop promote friendly ai for betterment of humanity and that is a pretty 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 long answer and that's why maybe it took a little bit more time than uh, it took previously 19 seconds it's really very very long time but I found one very interesting thing while working on with the DeepSeek API which is the API structure. Now here the API structure of DeepSeek is exactly the same as OpenAI. Exactly the same. Now what do I mean by exactly the same? Let me show you. So here in the tab I'm using the OpenAI uh, API okay. So just look at the structure api.openai.com which is api.deepseek.com forward slash chat forward slash completion same forward slash chat forward slash completions okay inside the header we have two headers in the open ai same goes with uh, the deepseek as well then inside the body the exact same body is provided here in open ai that we provided in the deepseek the only difference is the models in the deepseek the deepseek dash chat model we are using and here inside the open ai we are using gpt dash 40 model okay exactly same api structure so if i click on the send button uh what is your name was the question and i got the response by the way in 1.3 second which was 11 second in deepseek and i got the response i don't have a name but you can call me assistant how can i help you today exact same structure uh, are used in deepseek that we were having already in open ai that can, can be a coincidence or maybe they took the reference of OpenAI. I don't know. But yeah, that's how you can use the DeepSeek uh, uh, API in the Postman application. So everything is tested. Everything is working perfectly fine. So now we are good to go to write our own Arduino sketch to make it work inside the ESP32 board. So let me show you that sketch. Okay, so here is the sketch for asking any question to DeepSeek AI with the help of the API running on the ESP32 board. Now, this code is almost exactly the same as that of the OpenAI's ChatGPT uh, AI, we can say. There are only a couple of lines changed in it and I will let you know uh, what lines are different and I'll also explain the complete code. Let's just start. So, first of all, we need to provide SI name, password and the API key. These three variables we need to provide to make it work on uh, your account and your Wi-Fi router as well. After that, we'll connect it with the Wi-Fi and will go inside the loop part once it's connected with the Wi-Fi. Here in the loop, it will say ask the question into the pre, uh, serial monitor. It will wait for the question. So until unless we don't ask any question, it will wait here only. As soon as we ask the question, it will store that question inside the RES variable. And now it's a time to uh, do the API call. So we are calling the api.deepseek.com and we are providing the uh, necessary headers like the content type and the authorization token that's the api key after that we are providing the payload where the model is mentioned and the question is mentioned the question is variable it will depend upon what user is asked so that's what provided here inside the payload and then we are requesting it via post request method once the response is received like once the response is 200 okay it will go inside this if condition it will say response received now what happened previously in the chat gpt uh, we were getting the 200 okay response and immediately we are also getting the payload like the response in return but here in this case as we have seen once we are getting the 200 okay response after 10 to 12 seconds we are getting the actual payload so that's what uh, is different here so as soon as we received the response we cannot terminate the http uh, client uh, instantly rather we are we are using the http uh, what do you say wi-fi client stream library and we are waiting till 15,000 milliseconds, that means 15 seconds to read the response, to read the payload, we can say. So as soon as we receive the payload, we are storing it inside the response variable and it will be a JSON document, of course. So we are using the JSON uh, library. We are deserializing that JSON. And finally, we are just storing 
the key value pair content which which contains the actual answer inside the answer string and that's what is printed uh, into the serial monitor and after that we are terminating the http client and now we are clearing the response variable and we are good to go to ask the next question okay so that's the very basic code for asking any kind of question using the serial monitor on, uh, and this all thing will be running on esp32 so let's try to select the right board and com port and let's just hit the upload button and test this code out okay so the code is successfully uploaded now i'll open the serial monitor and here it will connect with our wi-fi network it's connected and it says ask your question let's ask the very basic question like hello what is uh, your name okay so this is the payload that is sent to deep seek okay response received that that means the 200 okay response was received by es32 and now it is waiting for the actual payload to be received Okay, so we got the answer after a couple of seconds, which says, hello, I don't have a personal name, but you can call me assistant. How can I help you today? That means uh, we successfully asked the question to DeepSeek AI and we are getting the response as well. Let's try to ask any mathematical question like what is 25 times 33 divided by 12? Okay, my spelling was wrong, but let's see if it still understands or not. 25 times 33 divided by 12. Let's see. Okay, so we got the answer as well. To solve the expression 25 times 30 divided by 12, follow these steps. So we got all the step-by-step -step solution and the final answer says 68.75. Let's try to verify it here. 25 times 33 divided by 12. It is 68.75, 68.75. That's the correct answer, by the way. Okay, so everything is working. You can ask any kind of questions to DeepSeek AI and it will give the answer here in the same order itself. The only drawback here is it takes around 12 to 15 seconds to get the actual answer, which is kind of very long, like waiting for the answer for 10 to 12 seconds do feel like a very long time because it's just the matter of one second or maybe less for other AIs. I'm really not sure why this is happening with the deep seek. But anyways, our agenda is fulfilled. We are successfully able to run the uh, deep seek AI onto the ESP32 board. Okay, so that was all about today's video. I hope you got to know about what is deep seek, how we can use that API and how we can use the Postman application to test API and later how we can write our own sketch to run those APIs into the ESP32 board to ask any question and getting the answer in the serial monitor. Later you can use uh, an, any OLED display or LCD display and display that answer into that particular screen uh, that will be kind of uh, level one of that project and later on you can increase the level and you can uh, make uh, your own voice assistant where the answers will be generated by DeepSeek similar like we have made with the help of Gemini AI. So the possibilities are endless and this was the very basic getting started video so let me know in the comments how was this video according to you and which AI are you using for your day-to-day -day activities will you be uh shifting over to deep sig ai or not well do let me know your thoughts down in the comment section of this video and yeah that being said i am just ending this video here and now just wait for my next video and then explore learn share with me techie sms